Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Game. Today, we're going to be having a look at Bard's Gold. I've got to admit, this is one of many games in my back catalogue of stuff that I need to look at, which has the words 2D retro-inspired platformer in it. Uh, it's not my favourite genre, that I will admit, but it wouldn't be fair to deny coverage as a result of that, would it? No. Could I get away with that? I probably could, actually, but <laughs> we'll give it a shot. I did say it has light RPG elements, which I was fairly interested in having a look at. So I'm like, okay, light RPG elements. Let's see what you mean by that. Very easy controls, left, right, up, down, and then S to jump and A to attack. Simple as that. This is by a indie dev named Pixel Lantern. It's $8 on Steam, and it's 15 minutes of game. She'll begin now. All right, here we go. Normal, thank you very much, whatever that means. Hello. Well, I mean, this is retro enough anyway, isn't it? So you can double jump, okay. And we've got some doors there, so we'll probably want to hit up to enter. Yep, that sounds about right. What is this attack? This is Dan-level attack. <laughs> does he have the power of Psycho? I would say that he probably does. That is the shortest range, whatever that is, I have ever seen. Sort of throwing little knives at it. He's a little anemic in his jumping as well. It takes three knives to break the pot. One has to wonder if you're probably better off with a different weapon, if that's going to be the case. Can I even make that jump? Oh. You die instantly, apparently. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> Absolutely my favorite. I just love games where you die immediately. That said, you know, the last time I did one of those, I actually ended up really enjoying it, but... Maybe not in this case? Ugh. You've got a lot of weight to you. Your character doesn't exactly bounce around. Perhaps the character's no spring chicken after all. Maybe that's a wig. Maybe he's in his mid-fifties. Alright, I have a key. That's wonderful. I think that's a chest or a barrel or something up there. Do I even want to try and get up there with that stupid bat? Can I kill it? There we go. We'll give it a shot. The soundtrack's quite nice, I'll give it that. You can actually buy the soundtrack. I might end up doing that, considering... Oh, that's a that's nothing, by the looks of it. Okay, I pressed up in an attempt to... I don't even know what that is, honestly. It, it, it looked like a chest, it evidently was not. Okay then, through this door, as it will be. Alright, so we're in the next world. I'm waiting to see what these light RPG elements... Ow! Are you kidding me?! It charges. Great. That's, uh... Well, I learned that by dying, which is awesome. And now there's knives being thrown at me for no apparent reason. Oh, this is just peachy. I don't know what that bonus is because the game doesn't tell me. Apparently there's an evil presence somewhere. And this bat is going to try and murder me as well. What do those bonuses do? You'd think they'd, like, buff your weapon. Maybe they do, but it doesn't actually tell you, so... Just unhelpful, by the way, <laughs> video game developers. Don't leave me to find out what it does through trial and error. Thank you very much. I don't have the patience for that. But then again, if I like patience, maybe I shouldn't be playing a retro-inspired. Seriously? Right, then. Okay. Of course. Why not? You know, when I had a little look at the Steam reviews for this, there was a quote that said, you know, this is a, it's a platformer for... People of any level of experience in the genre. Really? <laughs> because I'm seeing a lot of trial and error going on here. A lot of, hey, I'm going to kill you for no reason. It's like, you will learn through your deaths, which is fine, except for the fact the game has limited lives, which is probably going to be pretty damn frustrating. I, as far as I know, it's not a roguelike or roguelite in any way, from what I can tell at any rate, although it might have aspects of that. Okay, so do you want to grab another key? I suppose, why not? Okay, we have two keys. Did I replace my other key? What's the difference, I wonder? A bunch of stuff. I have a bunch of bonuses. Like, I'm not seeing any obvious benefit to that. As far as I know, I'm, I'm not actually attacking any more effectively here, but I could be wrong. Oh, it's a shop. Great, let's buy something. Uh, a sh shield sounds reasonable. There we go. Yes. This might protect your goods upon inevitable death. Okay, so it is a you're gonna die, ha 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 kind of game. All right, we're buying the shield then. That's fine. I even got a Steam achievement for it. I feel so wonderful. All right, then out we go. 
And we're still back in world one, two. Now, I saw what you did last time. You know, it would be safer just to go over the top, wouldn't it? Let's not go under there. That seems reasonable. Let's learn from our mistake. But there's... Where's the door, actually? <laughs> it's like, I, I guess I can kill these creatures, certainly. I don't seem to be doing any more damage. It's like minus one, minus one. So I'm not even sure what these bonuses do. It'd be nice to know that. wonder what happens if I hit escape. Nothing! I was like, is there an inventory screen? Nope. All right, then. Through we go. That spikes, you can't fool me. I'll probably jump on them anyway. In before they just shoot at me. Oh, don't get killed by a book. That's embarrassing. Wouldn't want any of... <clears throat> <coughs> Game over, apparently. Great. So the shield protects my goods upon death. All right, so there's an upgrade system. So it does have some rogue light sort of... Elements. Make sure to spend all your gems before leaving. You can't bring them into the next game. All right. Can we increase our max? A thousand? Oh, so you can you can commit your gems to something. That'll take ages. Well then, there's Bard's gold. <laughs> it's like, are we done? I thought the I thought it was supposed to protect my goods on death. I still- I actually have a key now, so I guess it did protect the key, but that's all it protected. So that wasn't worth much. And this level is identical to the previous one, is it? There doesn't seem to be any sort of random generation. No, there isn't. Okay, so you get to go through the same stuff again. Can't say I'm massively enthused by that. Up we go. At least we know for next time. And there's nothing else in this level, is there? So we can just bail out. Unless we want to kill those guys. And frankly, I'm not going to waste the time doing that. Oh, yes. Let's kill this damn thing before it gets near it. I'm trying to remember. Is this... No, this level looks different now. Maybe it's just the starting level. Or perhaps I just don't remember what this looks like. Yeah, this is clearly different to the previous world. So it seems like there is a bit of random generation going on here. Is this different? Yeah, this is different. Absolutely. My memory's not that bad. I'm not that old. Kill the stupid bat. There we go. I mean, so far, I'm left somewhat unenthused, honestly. I mean, it's basic platforming with basic attacking, and I'm trying to find what the hook is, really, outside of it just being purely difficult. And there's plenty of games that are purely difficult. But so far, the mechanics seem extremely uninspired. Into the shop we go. Can we afford anything? We can afford this, I think. What is that? A chakram. Okay, sure. Why not? Uh, Xena reference. All right, then. That's topical. Okay, then. So now that's a different weapon. So hopefully that's a little bit better than that stupid knife. Yeah, it's got a slightly longer range. It's like the bigger hitbox by the looks of it. So that this seems reasonably helpful. Avoid the spikes. Thank you very much. None of that nonsense. The firing rate isn't quite as good, but it seems to do a lot more damage. So, okay, this should make matters a little easier. Although I wasn't really dying to enemies. I was dying to hidden traps and nonsense like that for the most part. Yeah, that's a lot better. Oh, for Christ's sake. And now I've lost the weapon. All right. Okay, so the shield will save your goods when you lose a life, but it won't save them in between games. Right. Okay, that's pretty mean. Is that's assuming that I have to assume that's what it does because it didn't really help me too much at all. So do all the spikes drop or is it just random spikes that drop? Because that gives me a little bit too much I want to be the guy vibe and I'm not okay with that. No, I want to be the guy was deliberately evil for the sake of being evil and I don't approve of it when games that actually cost money try to do that. Or maybe I should just be assuming that every single spike will do that. But they don't. That's the thing. Not. I'm looking at this like, is there a visual indicator as to which one will drop? Nope. I don't know if any of them are going to drop. That one will drop, apparently. Okay, so if you're wa wandering under spikes, walk slowly. Right. Well, I've learned that, but I still think that's unfair and awful. That's not the sort of thing that people should have to be learning as they go. I think you should always be able to avoid everything on the first try if you're good enough. And I don't think necessarily having to make the assumption that a random spike will drop on you and kill you is necessarily fair when the rest of the spikes don't do that. You know, that's not a predictable 
thing necessarily. You know, I'd walked under spikes previously and they'd been fine. And then randomly one of those spikes decided it wasn't going to be fine. I, I, I've, what? Oh, damn it. I couldn't even see that. The game's a little dark as well, I've noticed. I thought that was a wall and it was actually a bunch of spikes. Are we safe now? Yeah, we should be safe now because that, that's dropped down. So we're fine. Okay. I mean, this is extremely basic. You know, it's not like I don't understand why developers go for this genre because it's easier to develop. You can kind of cut your teeth on it. But simultaneously, it's really hard to argue that this genre is not completely saturated now on Steam. There's so many games that do the whole, this is a difficult platformer thing. And you've really got to do a few things to stand out. So far, this isn't really doing much. I have to admit. You know, it's not helpful. This is not a genre that I'm into. But I think even people that are into this genre are probably saying, what, another one? Really? How many of these? I mean, we seem to get several every single week at this point. I mean, we did the... Oh, that speeds up. Okay. <laughs> Worm of doom it is then. And it speeds up to get away from my attacks from behind as well. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I really think that, that that's maybe the situation it's getting in. Because when we do the releases on the Co-Optional Podcast, we're always stumbling across a few retro-inspired indie platformers. And we're saying, oh god, another one? Really? Do we need any more of these? I'm just... Oh, okay, that takes a ton of damage. I'm just... I'm waiting for one to really knock my socks off. That isn't something like Meat Boy or Dust Force. That's what I'm waiting for. If I want to do something really, really different that takes me by surprise. As I try a lot of these and I install them and I find out what they are and I play a little bit and I, I for the most part, don't even really bother doing a video on them because it's just like, what have I got to say about this that I haven't said about other games in this genre before? Now, the, the little bit of... Oh, sodding hell, I'm, I'm now losing my focus. The little bit of roguelike... A rogue light progression isn't really enough to make it stand apart. And to be honest, like if I wanted a game that was based around that, I'd play Rogue Legacy because that kind of commits to the idea. Especially considering how many orbs or gems or whatever you seem to need in order to actually get any meaningful upgrades. I wonder if it's worth like saving your gems until the end of a run and then dying and then spending them on an upgrade. Because that, that upgrade was at a thousand, right? That's a lot of money. And you know, there are a lot of really good indie platformers available. Oh, damn it. I thought I could kill it before it got to me and I was mistaken. Okay, so I got a decent amount of money there. Can I at least now invest it into a health upgrade? I can. Yeah, so as long as you don't spend all of your money, you can sink a bunch of it. Seriously? Is there not a quicker way to do that? There must be a quicker way to do that, surely. Yes, hold down the A button instead of hitting enter. Okay, good. I was like, well, all right. So I'm slowly coming towards a passive health upgrade here. I mean, what is retro exactly? What's the difference between the two? Oh, you have one life. Okay, yeah. Right, that's... I'm sorry, not even retro games did that. Is it just deliberately making it more difficult? Even World 1 this time is different. Outside of the soundtrack, I'm just really not finding a lot to like here. That God, I, I, I hate saying stuff like that. I think maybe I, I've got too much of a conscience to be a games critic anymore. Because <laughs> I, I just feel sad, you know. I, I imagine the developer watching it and just getting upset or whatever. I'm like, damn, that sucks. But ultimately, there's a lot of video games these days. Huge amounts of video games. <laughs> damn it. Huge numbers. You gotta do something different. You gotta do it. Or you've gotta be really good at what you do. Really good at it. Like, yeah, okay, this is an alright platformer with a level of unfairness, with an extremely simplistic combat system, a decent soundtrack, and this sort of passive progression system. Duck. And that's it. And I, I mean, I don't have the patience to go any further with it either. You know, I, I imagine most people wouldn't. 
I'd be interested to know what these other upgrades are, and yeah, it seems nice that you can go to a shop and occasionally get an item and things like that, but... I... Mm -hmm. I... I just don't have the tolerance for games in this genre at this point. I really don't. It's like, right back to this, break some pots, kill some basic enemies. Oh, no, no, no. I think the fact that you have to restart and you only get a couple of lives is not helpful at all. It's like, well, it was inspired by retro games where you didn't have that many lives and games were really hard back then. Yeah, but they weren't necessarily good. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. Like, I didn't make them good. It, it's the, not wasn't the difficulty that made those games good. There were plenty of really hard platformers on NES and Super Nintendo that were awful. Just awful. And I don't see why I would ever want to go back to that. You know, for every Mega Man... For every Mega Man, there were a ton of LJN platformers that were ludicrously unfair just for the sake of it, because they had about an hour and a half of content, and they wanted you to keep replaying it. Which is not what this game is. You know, it's obviously designed a little bit better than that, but certainly in the first 15 minutes, I want something that would make me come back and try to play a little bit longer. And I'm not finding it. I didn't... I found nothing at the moment to encourage me to do that. Maybe you did, if you've been watching this. Maybe you have found something that... Looks really enjoyable to you here. I can't afford any of these damn weapons either. I have not, I'm afraid. I have not. Not really much going on with this. At least we can go back and... I'm gonna do... I'm gonna buy one more weapon and then I'm gonna wrap it up. Let's see if we can find something a little bit more interesting. What is this? Axe? Okay. Sure, let's buy the axe. And give that a shot. Can't shoot in here. Alright. What does it do exactly? Oh, so it falls down, okay. It's like, it's a lot of ideas that were done in Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts 5,000 times already. Spikes. Ah. Yeah, that was a that was a bad choice of weapon. This one is terrible. The Chakram at least made sense. It was reasonable. This, on the other hand, it does decent damage, but the arc is a bit of a nightmare. I didn't even touch that. I thought it had stopped its patrol path at the end. In fact, I, oh, I don't know. Well, that good weapon's gone now. Okay, I'm... I've had enough of this. Sorry, there's just not really much setting it apart from everything else on Steam right now. It's perfectly competent at what it does, but... These days, that's really not enough, is it? I discussed this in the Airscape video, and... That was uh, probably true, and Airscape is at least a little bit innovative. I don't really see any innovation here. You know, it's 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 all right. It's it's all right for a platformer, I suppose. But for me to enjoy a platform, it's going to be a little bit better than all right. You know, it's going to be more than competent. It's going to offer something really new and unique, something that would keep me playing. And <laughs> yeah, okay, no, Bard's Gold. Perhaps you saw something you like. In which case, go and have a look at it. It's eight dollars on Steam or your regional equivalent. I will not be returning to it. It's not, not my kind of thing, I'm afraid. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.